Welcome to today's Child Care Business Guide. The topic is how to develop a tuition assistance policy to ensure you comply with the Child Care Account Stabilization Program. A clear and well-structured tuition assistance policy can help you provide much-needed assistance to families who need it while providing guidance for your business to remain profitable and protected. This resource will walk you through the process of selecting what kind of tuition assistance you may choose to offer, how to document it, and how to enact it. The information contained here has been prepared by Civitas Strategies Early Start and is not intended to constitute legal, tax, or financial advice. The Civitas Strategies Early Start team has used reasonable efforts in collecting, preparing, and providing this information, but does not guarantee its accuracy, completeness, adequacy, or currency. The publication and distribution of this information is not intended to create and receive, does not constitute an attorney, client, or any other advisory relationship. Reproduction of this information is expressly prohibited. Paying for childcare can be difficult for many families now more than ever, yet having access to quality childcare is critical for families who need to work. That's why many childcare businesses are offering tuition, tuition assistance to families in need offering lower tuition rates, or helping families with their child care co-pays. Doing so can be a boon to your business, but as, child care, as a child care provider, you need to ensure that your business can remain profitable even when offering to help those families who need it. Having a clearly worded tuition assistance policy, a formal set of rules explaining what assistance is offered, which families are and are not eligible for, for financial assistance, how it might be terminated, and how they go about applying for it can help. Creating a policy that helps the families you serve while also helping you stay in business may sound daunting, but we can help. This resource will walk you through the process of selecting what kind of tuition assistance you may choose to offer, how to document it, and how to enact it. Having a tuition assistance policy in place can help you stay in compliance with the federal guidelines behind the Child Care Count Stabilization Payment Program. While offering tuition assistance to families is not a requirement to receive in your funds, the federal government does require that you at least consider enacting such a policy. Yes, the Child Care Account Stabilization Payment Program funds come to you from the state, but the state gets that money from the federal government, hence the federal requirement. That means that if you are selected for monitoring by the Wisconsin Department of Children and Families, you'll need to show that you at least considered enacting a tuition assistance policy. You will not be penalized for not offering financial support to your families as long as you can explain why you opted not to enact a policy. Additionally, even though offering tuition assistance is not required, doing so can be good for your business. Knowing that you are willing to offer financial help can attract more families to your program and can help the children in your care too, as studies have shown that having economically diverse children in a group setting can help the development of all the children in the program. When it comes to offering financial assistance to families, there are three common types, sliding scale fees, scholarships, and discounts based on certain criteria. Sliding scale fees adjust tuition based on economic need, usually as defined by the family's gross income. Gross income is all the money that a family takes in before any expenses or taxes. You can and should ask for pay stubs to verify gross income. You can set your sliding scale to determine a family's tuition based on where their income falls concerning the state median income, SMI, or the federal poverty level for a family of the same size. You can opt to set one tuition level for families below a certain threshold, say 85% of SMI, or you can have various rates for different levels of income and other factors, such as having multiple children in the program. Scholarships are another way of offering financial assistance and can be determined based on a variety of criteria. You could use financial need as your determining factor, which can be useful to, for families experiencing either a temporary need or an ongoing financial hardships. Scholarships can be useful in situations where financial need is difficult to determine, such as a family that is dealing with medical bills or a temporary job loss, or when a situation needs more flexibility than a strict sliding scale can offer. 
and discounts present a third option to offer tuition assistance based on the criteria you choose. You could offer discounts to siblings in your program, as paying for childcare for multiple children can be exceptionally expensive for some families. You could offer discounts to family to children of military families or to children of teachers. Or you could opt to offer discounts based on financial need. For example, if a family in your program falls below 85% of SMI, you could offer 25% off of their copay in tuition discounts. Choosing what type of financial assistance to offer is only the first step. Now you need to make it official. That means putting the policy in writing, communicating it to all the families in your program, and making it accessible for current and future families to read and review. We strongly suggest putting the policy on your website, in your parent handbook, and posting it in your facility in a place where all of the families can see it. Not only does this help families in need, but it also publicly displays your commitment to helping the families in your community. Whenever you are sharing information about your teacher tuition assistance policy, you should include as many details as possible. Not only does this help families understand what you are offering, but it also helps eliminate any confusion and potential misunderstandings with families. You should detail exactly what kind of tuition assistance you are offering, who is eligible for the program, how much funding is available, and if that funding is contingent on you receiving any other funding, how a family can apply and are there any deadlines and if there is an appeals process once the decisions are made. The next few slides offer examples of policies you can use with your program. Example policy one is for offering a discount for families with more than one child enrolled. For example, your business name is pleased to announce that we will offer a tuition discount to all families who have more than one child enrolled in our program. If you have two or more children enrolled, each child will receive a discount of 5% off their tuition for as long as they are both enrolled. Please note that this discount applies only to children who are enrolled in one of our full-time programs. To apply for the discount, speak to, insert the person's name that they need to speak with, or email her at, and include the email address. Example policy number two is for a variable rate need-based scholarship. The business name recognizes that times are tough, and we know that some of our families may need help with tuition payments, either temporarily or for the longer term. For this reason, we are offering both full and part year scholarships to help cover part of your tuition or copay. Scholarships will be offered only to families who can document a financial need. Full year scholarships will cover 25% to 50% of the child's tuition, and the percentage will be determined by the director on a case-by-case -case basis. Scholarships will be reevaluated annually. Partial year scholarships will also cover 25% to 50% of the child's tuition and will be awarded for a given amount of time based on temporary financial need. Both existing and new families are welcome to apply for a partial year scholarship at any time. For more information about either full or part year scholarships or to apply, contact, state the person's name and the way you contact them at their email address. Example policy three includes language that explains the sliding scale fee policy. Your business name recognizes that times are tough, but we are committed to ensuring that all families who need childcare can get it regardless of their financial situation. That's why our business is offering lower tuition fees for families who demonstrate financial need. Financial need will be, be, will be determined based on where your family's current gross income falls in relation to the current federal, federal poverty level for a family of your size. If you fall with 175% of the current federal po poverty level, your tuition rate will be, and then include the amount. If you fall within 200% of the current federal po poverty level, your tuition rate will be, and then state the amount. To see if you are eligible, you can check out this chart, which explains the federal poverty guidelines, and then you would include the link to that. To apply, contact whoever the person is they need to contact and how they can email them and include that. You will be required to share documentation of your current gross income. If your income changes during the year and affects your eligibility, you are asked to share this information as soon as possible with and put the person's contact information so your tuition can be adjusted accordingly. Tuition, tuition rate, rates are reviewed every 12 months and may change. For this example in policy number four, it's around a sliding fee scale based on a single financial decision point. For example, your policy might read, 
business name, recognize that times are tough, but we are committed to ensure that all families who need child care can get it regardless of their financial situation. That's why we are offering lower tuition rates for families who demonstrate financial need. If you would like to be considered for this tuition discount, send an email to, and state the person's name at the email address, you will need to supply the first page of your 1040 federal tax return for the last tax year to verify gross income. Families with a gross income of X dollar amount or less will be eligible for a discount tuition. All requests will be reviewed by and state who's reviewing it and the decisions will be issued in writing. Approved tuition discounts will be in place for 12 months from the approval date, after which time you will need to reapply. If you do have a sudden change in your financial situation due to a layoff or another unforeseen circumstance, contact and include who it is that they would contact to determine if there is additional temporary help available. Another policy that you could consider is in example five, which is a sliding scale, fee scale based on income. So you would write something to the effect of the, our business name recognizes that times are tough. But we are committed to ensuring that all families who need child care can get it regardless of their financial situation. That's why List Your Business Name is offering lower tuition rates for families who demonstrate financial need. Tuition discounts will be offered on a sliding scale fee structure based on your gross income. In order to be eligible, each caregiver in the household must demonstrate that they need full-time care, for example, in the form of a 30 plus hour work week, a full-time student schedule, or something similar. Families with a gross income of less than list out a, a, an amount, $30,000 per year, are eligible for a 25% discount on all fees. Those making $30,001 to $40,000 a year are eligible for a 10% discount, and those making $40,001 to $45,000 a year are eligible for a 5% discount. To apply, please contact, state the person's name and their email. Note that the tuition discount will be reviewed annually and additional information may be requested with your application. If there is a change in the family's financial situation after you are enrolled, whether it means you require additional support or if you no longer need assistance, please contact and then insert that person's name as soon as possible at and their email address. Another option for your business is a per child flat rate discount. A sample policy might read something like this. The business name is committed to ensuring that all families who need childcare can get it regardless of their financial situation. That's why business name is pleased to offer discounts to family with multiple dependent children in their household attending our program. The first enrolled child pays, pays full tuition, while each additional sibling will receive a $50 discount per week. For example, a family with two children enrolled will receive a $50 per week discount, while a family with four dependent children enrolled will receive a total discount of $150 per week. We hope this helps alleviate some of the financial stress for families enrolling multiple children in our care. Please contact, list the contact's name, and email should you have any questions. Just as it's important to clearly explain all of the details of your tuition assistance policy, it's also vital to explain how appeals will be handled, if at all. On the next few slides, you will find sample language for different types of appeals procedures. For example, um, this one is for an appeal process for a program with an individual owner. All decisions will be made by the program director. If you have any questions about your individual situation, you can contact her at and include an email address to request a review of your case. All reviews are final. In this example, we highlight what an appeals process policy could be for a nonprofit program. All decisions will be made by the board of directors in consultation with the program director. If you have questions about your individual situation, you can contact the board of directors chair at email to request a review of your case. All reviews are final. And lastly, here's an example of how a tuition assistance policy without an appeals process could be communicated to families. All decisions regarding financial assistance are made with the utmost care and consideration and are therefore final. Families may reapply after 12 months or if their financial circumstances change. Additional resources for early care and education can be found at the Wisconsin Early Childhood Association or WECA website. If you are not a member of the Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network, you can click here to learn about business training and support it offers. If you are ready to join the Wisconsin Early Education Shared Services Network, 
You can also click here to join.